Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Today's Friday, the 29th of October, 2021, and we finish off a very strong month here. S&P gained 7% this month, NASDAQ close to 8%. Uh, hopefully your account is doing great as well. Let's take a look at the charts and make some sense of it. Here's the S&P 500 on a daily time frame. And clearly, you know, since that shakeout, we have had this enormous rally that has brought us again to new all-time highs. This week, we held above the rising five-day moving average, uh, except for this one little shakeout on Wednesday. And uh, we remain innocent until proven guilty. Guilty. Pullbacks will be pullbacks until we break below and hold below a declining five-day moving average. It's really kind of that simple for the intermediate term time frame. NASDAQ as well. This market held uh, above the uh, week-to-date volume weighted average price. It was tested uh, numerous times, actually, if you look at uh, where we were. Uh, that's why I put a, a volume weighted average price on at the beginning of every week. It has a lot of significance uh, throughout the trading week. And here we are at all-time highs in the NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Typically, breakouts after an extended move like this don't last, but uh, typically doesn't mean always, and you certainly don't want to fight the trend. We're above a rising five-day moving average. It's innocent until proven guilty, and we've just seen some amazing leadership with stocks like uh, Tesla, just a massive week here, um, You know, and, and NVIDIA continues to power higher. It's just really amazing some of these moves here, um, kind of generational type movements if you think about it. Uh, the Russell 2000, as I mentioned, I had gotten out of this one. I actually got out. I didn't want to admit it to people on Tuesday. Uh, I instead uh, said that I did on Wednesday. I don't want to be one of those people who says, oh, yeah, well, I got out yesterday. I did get out on Tuesday. I announced it on Wednesday. So that whether that affects your performance, it shouldn't. Uh, I'm just tired of this range-bound market, and maybe it'll break the range. I mean, everything else is going. It's hard to believe that the Russell 2000 can't get out of its own way here and break this range and continue to drive the rest of the market higher. Although I did point out uh, to subscribers this week and then on Twitter in a chart that, you know, all of these prior long-term consolidations haven't led to, you know, real big rallies immediately after. If you look at, you know, the 2014-2015 consolidation, it broke out eked higher a little bit and then got smushed and kind of, you know, in 2019, we went sideways, eked a little bit higher and then got smushed. Now that, of course, is different. We had the pandemic there. But, uh, you know, the fact is, it doesn't always mean, you know, a breakout doesn't mean it has to continue higher. Hopefully that's what it means. I would like to see the, the Russell 2000 continue to move higher. I think, though, that for me, I'm done trading the index. Maybe that means that, uh, uh, you know, I've thrown in the towel and it's uh, that's my your contrarian signal. If that's the way you want to read into it, so be it. Um, you know, it's a market of opinions. And my opinion is I'm better served in the individual stocks than I am in this choppy index. So uh, semiconductors closing in on the all-time high as well. They've had a great run here. Here recently and sometimes they seem like they're up too much but when you have that rising five-day moving average it's just as simple as that it's innocent until proven guilty the biotechs continue to be the, the the big laggards they had a really bad month um, I don't know if you saw that they were down for the month I, I move that uh, spreadsheet away but they were down on the month and I don't really see any advantage to getting long in here with a declining 50-day moving average uh, maybe it rallies up towards that level but there's certainly better opportunities areas for opportunity in the in the broader market financial stocks uh, you know holding on to to big gains here as well up near all-time highs on an intermediate term basis they are stuck right at that declining five-day moving average so next week maybe we start to see a little bit of consolidation in this group if it you know maintains stuck below there we see a little bit of a pullback before it's able to uh, you know catch its breath and rally again and that would certainly be a healthy thing for uh, the financials and energy names same thing they're just kind of resting here and, and, and again that's a good thing above that rising 20-day moving average Bitcoin had a, uh, a good uh, week here they well, actually that's not true I mean we're kind of sideways if you look at it from where we were a week ago it was good in the fact that 
I was looking for it to pull back down towards this volume weighted average price. That's also a measured move target and a Fibonacci level that I pointed out on Twitter. But instead, we're seeing that uh, it's, it's quite resilient here, that the that Bitcoin is right up against the volume weighted average price from this peak. And it seems as though it doesn't want to continue lower. Now, one odd thing is the uh, BITO, the Bitcoin ETF. This thing came uh, came to the public on the uh, 19th of this month, and the volume weighted average price from there is 41.25. Uh, I'm not really sure what is more important right now: the volume weighted average price off of this, or the volume weighted average price off the high in Bitcoin. So to me, the jury's out. But I think overall, it remains constructive in Bitcoin, and certainly a lot of the other. Uh, um, uh, cryptos as well you see that uh, ethereum right now is at a new all-time high i had pointed out on twitter this week uh this one inch i have no idea what it is still but it was four dollars and it went straight to nine dollars i didn't get out at nine that happened in the middle of the night but it was uh, nonetheless a very good trade i'm also involved in enjn uh, that i had pointed out on twitter as well as uh link chain link this one is behaving well i've also got my eye on grt kind of the same type of pattern here you know off the this peak here it rounds out now the buyers are close to getting back control in the graph, whatever the graph is, uh, is not really my concern. But I know that if I can get involved and set a stop somewhere under that 90 cent level, maybe it continues to move higher uh, for next week. Again, you know, we've got a lot of great setups. I would say, you know, with if if crypto remains strong, keep an eye on some of these names like BITF, uh, CAN, BITF is right here, uh, HIVE certainly look like uh, it, it has the potential to continue this volume weighted average price off that high is ho holding up it's traded massive volume in here over to a shorter term time frame probably has to get above uh, today's high it kind of fell off at the end of the day maybe if it were to do something like this next week that hive would be a good one to keep an eye on you can't I to me you just can't trade you know solely based off the daily time frame you've got to look inside and what's going on uh, SGH is one that I have an eye on next week uh, this is smart Global Holdings, um, Zixi is another one. I mean, there's all kinds of great setups out there. PSTG, uh, Roblox is uh, looking interesting here. They, I believe they have, well, they have earnings due the 8th. You can see the earnings uh, right up in here. Anyways, I hope it was a good week of trading for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, I always forget to say it. Please like it and subscribe. Uh, share it with your friends, etc. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good weekend.